All of us are in the battle. The Bible says we wrestle not against. What I will not do to anybody is to say that. Ah, someone came down there. Hey, Apostle, I had a nightmare. Oh, Apostle, this is happening to me. I said, say, something is working in my body. I've never prayed for anybody who said that. I ask him, who did you offer your body to? Whatever you offer your body to where you are out of church, that's the one that works in your body. Go and collect your body back and then give it to the Holy Ghost. You know, if something is working in my body. You don't need to be prayed for. I'm hearing voices. Ah, the Bible says, my son, my children hear my voice. The voice of stranger, I will not follow. It didn't say you won't hear voices. It said you will not follow it. So then don't follow it. No, no, somebody will say that. Let us pray deliverance, deliverance. Hey, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Pray for you. No, 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 no. We don't do that in Christ with Tabernacle. What we do in Christ with Tabernacle is this. You are welcome, Pastor. What we do in Christ with Tabernacle is this. You come to me that something is working in your body. I ask you, are you born again? Yes. The Bible says, offer you your body. To, I say, so who did you offer your body to determine who walk in your body? For me, I got a feeling everything going to be all right. Hey, 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 hey. Holy Ghost is the one working in my body. If Holy Ghost is not working in your body, something else is working in your body, then tell that thing not to work in your body anymore. Put an end to it. Whatever you did that made the thing work in your body, shut the door. Excuse me. In CFT, you do it yourself. Am I talking to somebody here? You are God's agent. You carry the mandate of heaven. The authority of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is given to you. And so Jesus said, without authority, ask anything you will. As long as you say it's not good, heaven says it's not good. As long as you say stop, heaven says you stop. As long as you say this be, heaven will say yes. As demons answer the agent of Satan, angels answer the agents of God. Your authority has no limit. That's what Jesus said here, whatever you do, you bind. But let me say something to you now. Let's go to the same Matthew chapter 18. And we read from verse 18. We're getting to the end of our meeting. Verse 18 says, I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Is that what was repeated in chapter, nine, in chapter 16, 19? Yes? Come on, is that correct? I want to show you something here now. Hmm? But you know that in that 16, he has said that I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot. He had told you that for Satan, don't worry about him. Leave him for me. You know, some time ago, the Lord Jesus, I told you, in my conversation with him, he, was, he told me, he said, why are you worrying your brain over what you cannot see? When you serve the unseen God, the one who controls the unseen, my, 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 my sanity came back. From that day, I don't think about anything I can't solve. Oh, somebody did this. Somebody did that. Maybe, maybe. There's no maybe with me. If you did it, you did it. Period. I cannot begin to try to interpolate. Uh, maybe because of this. For what? The Lord said, what you cannot see. Don't think about it. And the Lord told me, the reason why many Christians don't have divine encounter is because their mind has been clogged with things that are not relevant. They want to play God. Huh? So... Because of that, the things that you see, that you will have received revelation of how to deal with it, you can't, you can't see the revelation because your mind is always thinking that this one, that, this one, that, this, that, that one, this problem, that problem, yeah, this problem. Are you a problem solver? Excuse me. Don't you understand that you will, in the, the, the Bible says, in the world you have many problems. I mean, many troubles. Yeah, you have many problems. From the day you came out of your mother's womb, what was the first thing you did? Did you shout hallelujah? You cried and disturbed all of us who had seen that life. <laughs> I, I thought that child should be laughing when it's coming out of the womb. Ah, yeah, yeah. For what are you crying for? Because in this place you have many troubles. <laughs> hallelujah. You are welcome to the, para, to the place of trouble. And this is the world of trouble. All right. So, for trouble, leave him alone. 
so that you can hear solutions and directions. You have the authority. And Jesus said here, you can buy anything and lose anything on earth and it shall be losing heaven. But it now went further. Look at the next verse there. Shall we read together, please? Again. Read it again. The Spirit of God just told me that there is a family where the wife, the woman is wearing multiple earrings and the husband is complaining. And that causes you trouble. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Show me in the Bible. If anybody says, when you are rebuked, show me in the Bible, hell is the place that you will be shown. It will be too late. What you should ask yourself, show me in the ears of Mary, the mother of Jesus, Nose in the ring, three earrings in the air, ankle chain, and he's married the mother of Jesus. Show me an angel who appeared with you to you like that. And then you can't question your authority. Look, if Satan wants to destroy a Christian, he attacks the unity in the house. He doesn't have business with you. He has business with unity. Because Jesus said, what you agree. So if there is no agreement between the man and the woman of the house, then everybody is on their own. The children of the house that will prosper are children who have direct communication with Jesus. They won't be affected. But that union will never fulfill what heaven had determined. And this is the problem of many Christians. Because Jesus says, whatever you agree, as such, excuse me, what's your problem, by the way? Can't you just say, okay? Is it not positive or negative that bring current? Yes? So somebody must accept. And let us just go on like that. If you have divided opinion, Somebody, let's just do it. And when we do what you said and we crash, you will learn next time not to be bent on your own will. And I too will learn that my reasoning is okay. Isn't it? So why should husband and wife fight on Sunday morning before coming to church? Over what argue? Excuse me. They are coming to praise God. The matter of sweets become problem. The matter of dressing become problem. To wrap powder in my, in my wig, my something. If you know that those things are problematic, get your wife up three hours before the time. So that you tell your wife that you have time now to look for your wig. <laughs> to look for you. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. No, 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 no. If this week is what is causing problem every day, then wake her up early. And if they wake you up early, you two don't say that it's too early. No, because you are a weak looker. You are, you are a few looker. You have to do. Or oh, look for all those things a night before. Help her go and look for them. And put them and say, this is your wig, this is your shoe. <laughs> Which clothes are you wearing to church on Sunday, tomorrow? Okay, yeah, 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 I don't know. Okay, come, let's go to your wardrobe. Okay, get the clothes. Take the clothes from her and say, okay, leave the rest for me. And then in the morning, as you are waking up, the clothes is hanging. <laughs> the wig is on top. <laughs> Hallelujah. So why should the matter of wig become problem? You are coming to church, oh, then when you get to, we argue, 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 when you get to the door of the church, you say, oh, you know, we are in the sanctuary of God now. Just stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Excuse me. Two must agree for heaven to speak. I've practiced this thing for 50 years. 
Yeah, 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 oh boy. Oh boy. Mama, 50 years ago, 1983, we met. 73, sorry. We met. And excuse me. Excuse me. I was born by a mother who doesn't talk. If you saw her not talk, you want to do it this way. You say, just do it the way. If I say no, if she says yes, well, sometimes she should say yes. When I say no, electricity conducted. No problem. Okay, so no, you say yes. Okay, yes, we do yes. And some other time I say no, it's okay, okay, we do it, you know. Correct? There's no wind there. Either you agree or you disagree, it's win win. As long as there is no fire. Because so that your prayers will not be hindered. At the end of the day, I want the best for my wife. She wants the best for me. And we all want the best for the children. So when we know that Jesus said, the two of you need to be agreed or need agreement for you, it's your agency authority over the home. Because whatever you bind, agreed to bind, is bound. Whatever you lose, is lose. But anyway, I will give you a case study now. But you must understand this, that we are agents of God on earth. I love this. And he went further to say, he says, again, if two shall agree as touching something, you, are, you know, anything you ask for, it will be done. And for you, it will be done for you by your Father in heaven. There is something that, that I wanted you not to miss. The word to, the word agreement, the word speak. Do we get it now? Look at the next verse. And now went for that to say, where two or three come together in my name, there I am in your midst. So, let me ask you a question. We came together in this church on Friday. Where were you? Somebody gave testimony on Friday. In June, God said we should do seven days instead of three days. Our first, second, third. And in the seven days, what happened is mind-blowing. A number gave it. Excuse me. Someone gave a testimony among the protocols that he had some, some accidents which led to palpitation. And he was in the meeting, and I was preaching. And as I was preaching, I remember vividly, I was touching him, and my hand went to his head. But I didn't know why. And I went away, and I would preach again. And he had consulted the doctors on this. And then I came to him and put my hand on his chest, and that palpitation ceased instantly. If he was watching me by Zoom, he would not get that that day. You see, there is the one we follow who is Jesus Christ. He went to the temple, and he was preaching the word, and somebody had been demon-oppressed. If that demon oppressed was not in the church that day, he could die oppressed. But Jesus said, ha, look at it. He kept on. When he threw the word to the demon, the demon reacted. And he said, come out of him instantly. You see, when Jesus was passing by and he met Bartimaeus, if Bartimaeus was not on that very spot on that day, he may die a blind man. Am I talking to you? Where two or three are gathered? So what about where 1,000 is gathered? Can you imagine the power we can generate? That battle of your life that you have been fighting alone, it may need the company of saints of God, worshiping the Lord God himself. It happens a lot of time. And the glory will come down. And God will begin to deal with every individual right there. Before you know it, your situation has been dealt with. Or oh God, the spirit of prophet will come upon one, like in Second Chronicles 2020, and they will begin to speak. It's about your life. Solution will come for you. Why do you reject good? If you say you are serving Jesus. Obey! 
You go to your work every day, to the house of God, how many days a week? Very little. And yet, you engage yourself with frivolous things. Come on now. Stop that. God wants to take you to a higher level of blessing and of power. Let God. Let God. You are God's agent. Now, in faith, in, oh, finally, let me show you some, probably one or two undertakings, and then we go. Okay, that's good. Um, because we are coming tonight to start the the um, the victory night. Look at something interesting Jesus said in John fourteen, verse twelve. I tell you the truth, anyone who has what? Faith in me will do what I've been doing. He will do even what? Greater things than this because I'm going to the Father. Now, excuse me, as an agent, Jesus said, you will do more than what I did. Of course, Jesus was only limited to Israel in his time, but we are not. We are not. But he said we'll do what he's been doing. So Jesus healed the sick, we can heal the sick. He raised the dead, we can raise the dead. You must believe it. And you must do it. Are you with me now? Some people in the Christian faith have a different application or interpretation of this. It's their business. For me, agent theory says the power of your organization is vested in you and you can bind your organization to the third party, if you speak or you make an undertaking to anybody. And in this case, Jesus now expressly said, ask anything. And he said, whatever you permit, whatever you disallow. So come on now, somebody have to start speaking. Somebody have to start speaking. You know that person is you. It is you. You can't take no for an answer anymore. Somebody write you a letter and say, I regret that you are not. You will take that letter and say, Father, I revoke this. I am qualified to this. Now I command you to reply me back that you are happy to give this thing to me. In the name of Jesus, it's done in heaven. The one who said, I regret, will write you and say, we made a mistake. We are so sorry. It has happened a number of times among you. That's why people go for interview, they just take regret letter and they go. No, some people revoke it and they call them back. Whenever you come to me and say you want to go for interview, if you remember, the first question I ask you is that, do you want that job? That's the first question I ask. And in this church, we have taught you that if you go for any interview, you must do due diligence. You don't, you don't go for an interview just because you apply. No, you must know the company. You, we have a series of seminars to educate you on that. You must do research on the company. So you must know the problem the company has. You must know relevant, relative to what role they are giving you. You must be able to tell them the values we bring to that company by the road. Jesus commanded to do that. If you want to build a tower, you sit down and count the cost. You don't pray for miracle when you are doing nothing. You want success, you read. You don't pray to pass when you read nothing. It's a joint venture. Am I talking to you? I ask you, do you want it? If you say yes, I say you got it. And let me say this to you. It happened just like it among you. It just happened like that. If they turn you back, if you want it, really want it, we revoke it. And we have seen people who have been turned down and the company now called it. There are some people here, they turned them down for an, offer, uh, for an interview. And I told them that you, the reason is because you are more qualified than that role. You went on too, too low for your qualification. And in that same company, about a year or two, they called them, they went back. And that company now had the role that befits them. They are now serving there. They are now directors. Because what they are looking for is useless. It's not their qualification. You know something? Poverty will make your brain not work. Am I talking to you? Yes, 
Limitation, it's a, a bird that is in a cage for many years. When you remove the cage, it will be flying that distance because his brain has been climatized to that distance until they kick him out before he fly. We had a bird like that in, in my house before nobody in the, you know. That bird, the owners now said go. The bird will not go. So the owner picked the bird and now threw the bird up. He flew a little bit and he came down. He said, you are lazy. Pick him again. He threw him up. And the bird now flapped his wing and he saw other birds flying and then he started flying. And then he went. And then in the evening he came back. Yes. So because they opened the cage for him to be going. So the next thing is because the, the, the man who was keeping the bird, he gave him water with sugar all the life of the bird. So the bird flew away and he must have drank water. It's not tasting like the water I drink. He came back. And the next time the bird came, he came with friends. 